God's word for our meditation, as I mentioned earlier, comes from John's gospel. I will reread another verse for us again. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. This is God's word. Have you ever been so wrong about something when at the beginning you thought and believed in your heart that you were right the entire time? That happened to me a lot of times when I would take quizzes or tests in school. I thought I had the knowledge down and I would go into it with all this confidence and I would take the quiz or the test thinking I knew the answers, they were all correct. And then you get the test back and there's all these answers marked wrong and I thought they were right the whole time. I had this blind confidence about me. And I don't know, maybe it was I didn't study hard enough. Maybe I thought I knew it and I didn't put the effort in that I should have. Or maybe I just took bad notes or studied the wrong thing. But whatever the case was, I looked wrong when I thought I was right, but my teachers were patient with me. Guys, maybe you've had to go to the store to do some shopping. And on your way back, your wife calls you and says, hey, did you make sure to get the peanut butter? That's what we needed. And you say, yep, it's in the trunk. I'll be home in five. And then your wife opens the bags, and she just gives you a look. And it's back in the car to the store because you forgot the one thing and you were confident you had it in the trunk. But hopefully you, your wife was patient with you. Now Nicodemus, a Pharisee of the Sanhedrin, the ruling council of the leaders, thought he was right about what he believed. He would have bet his life on it being correct. And being a teacher of Israel, he knew his Old Testament like the back of his hand. If someone had a question about a law, he would point to chapter and verse in Leviticus to help them out. If a problem arose, he was able to, with his other ruling brothers, look at the law of Moses and decide what needed to be done. If he, need to, if he needed to feel better about himself, he would look at the Ten Commandments and check them all off as a job well done. I can feel good about what I do. He knew his stuff, but then this Jesus guy shows up and starts making him question everything he ever knew and believed. But unlike most Pharisees who would try to trap Jesus and to ridicule him and call him a blasphemer and that he was from the devil, instead Nicodemus wanted to know more. Jesus was making him question things and making him feel wrong, but in all the best ways. So they arranged this meeting under the cover of darkness so that Nicodemus wasn't seen fraternizing with the enemy, so to speak. And right away, we see this little shred of faith come from Nicodemus to what Jesus was saying, just in the way he was questioning what Jesus was doing. He knew that the things Jesus was doing, the miracles he was performing, had to come from God. This wasn't from the devil. This wasn't Jesus being a false teacher or a blasphemer. These miracles were from God. And instead of Jesus giving him a play-by-play -play of this breaking down all of his miracles, he got right to the heart of the issue, and that was Nicodemus' heart. Jesus often does that. He gets to what people need to know, not what they want to know. And Jesus knew what Nicodemus needed to hear. And that was God's true plan of salvation. Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. In our lives, every person on this earth goes through at least one birth, and that first birth is from our mother. That's the only way we can come into this world. That's how it works. But some of us go through two births, one from our mother and another birth by the Holy Spirit in the waters of baptism. One birth brings death, the other birth brings life. When we are first born from our mothers, we are born spiritually dead because we are bound to the sin of the flesh. Two imperfect parents cannot create a perfect child because sinful flesh, as Jesus says, gives birth to sinful flesh. 
Jesus says we cannot even see the kingdom of heaven unless we are born again of water and the Spirit unless we are baptized. Because by nature we are blind, dead enemies of God. And so we need to be born again. We need baptism. And Jesus is validating everything John was preaching about in the wilderness. Crazy homeless John the Baptist was not so crazy after all as he was baptizing people, calling them to repent of their sins. We need baptism to bring life to our dead, cold hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. Nicodemus would have gone his whole life to the grave thinking his works of the law are what made him righteous in God's sight. That was what brought him salvation. He thought his faithfulness, his obedience was his ticket to heaven, but Jesus was patient with him. Nicodemus had a strong faith, but it was just aimed in the wrong direction instead of pointed at Christ, and Jesus came to fix that for him. So now the time of dialogue between Nicodemus and Jesus was over. Now Jesus began a monologue. Jesus knew that Nicodemus knew his Old Testament well, so he drew from a story that he would have known very well. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, he would have known that story very well. The Israelites were once again complaining that they didn't have good food. What else is new? So snakes were sent that would bite the Israelites, and they started dying. But after a cry of repentance... A promise of salvation was given. If anyone was dying from a snake bite, they only had to look at the snake on the pole and they would live. It was that simple. They didn't need to fast for a week. They didn't need to give up their birthright. They didn't need to tithe 10%. They just had to look, believe, and live. It was a very simple math equation. Snake equals life. But it wasn't about what they did that saved them. It wasn't because they physically moved their head and opened their eyes that they were saved, but it was faith in the promise that God gave them that they were saved. All they needed to do was believe and live. Jesus says, In the same way, the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. The math equation there is even more clear. Jesus equals life. In the same way that a look of faith to the snake would save them from physical death, when we look to our Savior, we who are spiritually dead, we look, we believe, and we live. We are saved from that eternal spiritual death. And that was God's plan all along. In love, God gave his law to the Israelites in order to discipline their hearts and their lives. It would cause them to wake up every day and realize, I can't do this myself. I need redemption. I need atonement. I need a savior from this sin. It would cause them to grasp so tightly by faith the promise that the Messiah would come and save the world from sin forever, that these sacrifices were not to go on for eternity. And hidden in that law is the sweet promise of the gospel. And this gospel is wrapped up so beautifully in the most well-known verse in the world that was originally spoken in secret to one man. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Friends, we live in a world full of Nicodemuses. There are people in this world that believe that they control their own destiny, that in order to receive good, they must do good to get there. They believe that there's no such thing as hell because how could a good God send innocent people there? They believe that they can make it on their own. They are so confident in their convictions and their worldly knowledge that they would bet their life on it being the absolute truth. 
They believe they can make it to heaven if they even believe in one by their works that will save them because I can do it myself. And the thing is, we have that Nicodemus in our hearts too. We have hearts that from the moment we are conceived make us public enemy number one of God. Our hearts cause us to hate who God is and what he does. Our hearts hate that God hates sin because why can't I do what I want if it makes me feel good? And all of us are born of the flesh. And without intervention, without baptism, with water and the spirit, we will be on a one-way trip to hell for eternity. Convinced that we were right of everything we did. But God did not send his son to condemn the world. The law was not the last word of God. Instead, Jesus was sent to save the world because God loves the world. God does not love sin, but he loves his creation. He hates that sin broke that relationship that we once had with him in perfection. And he went to the greatest lengths to mend that relationship. He caused Jesus to hang on a cross and die because to atone for sin, blood needed to be shed and a life needed to be taken. He caused Jesus to hang on that cross and die because we could not do it ourselves. And he came to us because we could not go to him in our sin. He accomplished full and free salvation by sacrificing his own son to atone for your sins, to save you from that eternal death because he loves you. And all of that was accomplished by a perfect man who was sent and motivated purely by undeserved love for you so that all you have to do is look, believe, and live. And that's a math equation you can be certain you will always get right. Believe and live. Amen. Please stand.